Hey guys, welcome to the second part of this week's Coffin Hero Show, taking you through the new single issues into the store this week. Quite a big week, lots of great stuff from DC, Marvel and independent companies, of course. So here to take you through it all. So undoubtedly my biggest uh, title I'm looking forward to this week, surprise, surprise, is Bat-related and it is Batman, the Batman I should say, First Night. This comes from Dan Jurgens and Mike Perkins, black label, silly size or premium plus format, however you prefer. Uh, but this looks absolutely brilliant. It's set um, in 1939, so back when Batman was first created. So the year is 1939, the world's still reeling from the horrors of the First World War is on the brink of tipping into an even more gruesome conflict as fascism is on the march and gathering strength in America's darkest corners. Against this backdrop, a series of violent murders has begun in Gotham and the recent emergence of the mysterious vigilante known as the Batman has the power brokers of the city living in fear of institutional collapse. All the evidence in the murder investigation defies logic. The perpetrators are all men who died in the electric chair. But when the Batman comes face to face with one of these sickening anomalies, he barely escapes with his life, throwing into question his ability to survive in a world that is brutally evolving around him. This looks phenomenal. Uh, amazing looking artwork from Mike Perkins, who's, you know, such a great collaborator with Ram V on Swamp Thing as an example. Dan Jurgens, legendary writer, awesome stuff. So that's your cover A. And then we also got in the cover Bs, which are sort of homage covers, the old pulp novels, that kind of thing as well. So jump into the single issues this week in terms of the independent stuff. First up we have Dead by Daylight. This is issue four for the Titan series. This does include an exclusive in-game code as well, and that's the end of that mini-series. We have Corella de Vil, number two, continuing on with the Disney Villains series there. A uh, big one for us in store is definitely Duke, part of the Energon universe, of course. Uh, perfectly links to that. Joshua Williamson, Tom Riley on art. Just a really good time at the moment. Uh, next up is The Fog from Sumerian Comics. This is great. This is set 40 years after the original movie and has to do with some of the legacy characters and their families. Uh, really, really good. Read that this morning. Uh, Godzilla Best of Destroyer. Uh, so continuing on with these one shots from Godzilla, reprinting old classic stories, the best of certain uh, kaiju. This one just speaks to me on so many levels. Uh, Night People. It's an adaptation of a novel. Um, Novel by Barry Gifford, who wrote Wild at Heart, which David Lynch turned into a movie, which got Barry Gifford co-wrote. And it's adapted by Chris Condon, who does that Texas blood. Lynch, Condon, done. Thank you very much. Next up is Radiant Black, number 28. So uh, I believe this was out last week. We just got our copies this week. So continuing on with the Catalyst War. Uh, another one I read this morning, which I thought was great, is Torpedo 1972. So set back in the 70s in America. It's to do with the Mafia, it's to do with crime bosses, and it's to do with nosy journalists poking their noses in where it doesn't belong. Uh, New Walking Dead Deluxe this week as well. So issue 84 we're up to uh, as part of the No Way Out storyline. And we finish off the indie stuff with two different books. We have Exo Man of War Unconquered, uh, Liam Sharp, continue with that, and Will Conrad. And then the other one, we do have cover A's of this as well, but I only seem to have put the cover B's in here. Uh, TMNT, Last Ronin 2, Re-Evolution is this week as well. Such a popular series for the first uh, volume, so now we're on the volume two. And this one is the variant by Luis Antonio Delgado, done in a video game style. Moving on to DC. So this week, obviously, with Batman the first night, we've also got me and Lime Batman this week as well. So Chip Zdarsky and Jorge Jimenez continuing on with their Batman title. We have Birds of Prey up as far as issue seven. Uh, Kelly Thompson continuing to write one of the most fun uh, DC titles at the moment. We have uh, Facsimile in this week, which is a perfect reprint, of course, of Detective Comics number 411, which features very, very, very early Neil Adams artwork. Uh, Poison Ivy <clears throat> has reached issue 20, believe it or not, which is very impressive actually. G. Willow Wilson continuing on with the exploration of Pamela Isley. Uh, Shazam number 9. This is the last issue that Mark Wade's writing. Mark Wade's then moving on to do a, a DC event out later this year. Uh, he will be writing all 25 issues of it, so he's kind of busy. Uh, understandably, but this is the last issue he's writing from Shazam. And then we finish off DC with Superman 78. We're as far as issue five now for the uh, tie-in or the sequel, I should say, to Superman 78. On to Marvel, and there is a lot of Marvel this week, although the, you could argue there's a lot of Marvel every week, for good or for bad. Um, yeah, it's something I was chatting to a customer about earlier. See, when it comes to quantity, it really does seem to be that DC have paired their titles back a little bit. Uh, Marvel still obviously have a big, massive um, amount of titles coming out, which is not a bad thing. It's great to have a lot of choice. It's just interesting the two companies are, are, you know, for all their similarities, are approaching it in almost a slightly different way. 
One of the most anticipated Marvel this week is definitely What If Aliens. What if Carter Burke had survived? Well, we don't want him to survive because he's a slime ball, but what if he did survive? This is the, the start of the comic series. It's going to be a five issue mini series of the Avengers number 11 out this week as well. So, Jed McKay continuing on with his Avengers title. This was my vote for best of ongoing series of 2023, J. Michael Straczynski's um, Captain America. Just an absolutely amazing title. Uh, we're up as far as issue 7 of that. Continuing on with the 50th anniversary celebrations for Giant Size. So Giant Size are one-shots focusing on specific characters. So far they've done Miles Morales Spider-Man, they've done Fantastic Four. Again, always one-shot adventures. This week sees Giant Size Spider-Gwen. We got in some facsimiles of Incredible Hulk 181. So if you want to read the second appearance of Wolverine. Yes, you heard that correctly. Um, we have the the battle between Hulk and Wolverine, of course. A lot of people consider it the first appearance, but Hulk 180 for me all day long. Uh, Miss Marvel starts off a new series this week, which is Mutant Menace. This is the follow-up to uh, the Miss Marvel, the new mutant. So, uh, yeah, issue one, and Iman Vellani indeed does co-write this again. Of course, plays Miss Marvel in the live-action MCU. We have Sensational She-Hulk up as far as issue six now. Rainbow Rowell continuing to... Uh, Red She-Hulk, still got those beautiful Jem Bartel covers. Definitely a big one for Marvel this week is The Spectacular Spider-Man. This is written by Greg Wiseman, art by Humberto Ramos, and it pairs Peter Parker and Miles Morales into the same title. Uh, some Star Wars stuff for you now. We have Star Wars issue 44, The uh, Trial of Lando Calrissian. Uh, Charles Soule continuing to write Star Wars. We have Star Wars High Republic. Uh, issue 4 for Kevin Scott's written title. Ultimate Universe Wise, we now have Ultimate Spider-Man number 1 back and stuff. This is the third printing variant done by Sarah Pacelli. Uh, but if you're wanting to see what all the hype is about, and why wouldn't you? Because it's awesome. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man number 1, third prints in stock this week. Speaking of the Ultimate Universe, we see the launch of Ultimate X-Men this week from Peach Momoko. Definitely the most unique looking of the Ultimate title so far. I'm looking forward to the, uh, digging into that myself. We have Venom number 31, so Toron Grombeck continuing to write on Venom. Ken Lashley doing the art in this one, and this is the start of a new uh, storyline. So a good jumping on point, uh, Symbiosis Necrosis, poet you don't know it. Uh, Weapon X-Men is up next, so issue one, a new five-issue miniseries, I believe, written by Christos Gage, art by Yildere Sinar. And we finish off Marvel then with X-Men number 32. Uh, as we start to wind down with the fall of the House of X. So we just have to finish off then with the variants. And again, a good selection this week. We have Batman 145 variant done by Yasmin Putri. Some beautiful work there. We have the Void Rivals 1 to 10 retailer incentive variant by Andre Lima Arrio um, for Void Rivals issue 7. Torpedo 1972, this is the Virgin variant, which is a 1 to 7. Uh, retailer incentive variant cover as well. With the Detective Comics 411 facsimile, the Neil Adams art, we also have the lovely shiny versions of those covers as well. Ultimate X-Men, we've went big on the variant covers. So first of all, you've got Dyke Ruan for the first one. We have Mark Brooks doing a variant cover for Ultimate X-Men one as well. Uh, Peach Momoko, because of course, Writing and drawing the title is not enough. She needs to do variant covers as well. So variant cover there. And oh, look at this. It's another Peach Momoko variant cover. This one being the 1 to 10 retailer incentive. And this is what's called the design variant. We're, you know, designing the characters. Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, blank variant cover. So of course, this is the kind of variant that you get if you're planning to go to conventions. Want to get sketches done by artists, things like that. They would do it on these. But if you prefer a Spectacular Spider-Man with art already on it. We also have the shiny foil variants for that as well, done by David Marquez. Uh, definitely the most fun cover of the week is the What If Aliens uh, by Scotty Young. Always a great one. And then we finish off with, oh look, she's even more work to do. Peach Momoko doing a variant then as well for What If Aliens. So that finishes off everything into the store this week in terms of single issues. You can certainly check out the video um, prior to this one for all the new graphic novels that came in this week. Uh, all pull lists are done. Everything's good to go. So all being well, I'll see you guys throughout the week. Uh, if not myself, you'll see Chris, of course. But uh, I hope this proved useful as ever. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take it easy.